Welcome back to another edition of the No Stopping Kev Show. It's the Beefert Crew, and we're so excited for episode seven. What up? What's happening? Good to be back today. Yeah, always, always. Been a long week, but it's a great way to end it off. And I feel like my levels are a little, little strong today, but I'm liking it because you need the strong levels, little voice. Mouse in the house. Uh, I don't know. So it's good though. Yeah, it's been, like you said, a long week. Um, I like to say something because we lost a legend, a good basketball player, um, a good friend and everything, you know, and Lewis Lloyd, Lewis Black Magic Lloyd, you know. It's kind of depressing, you know, but, you know, um, sometimes things happen for the best, man. You know, you're sorry to see it, but, you know. Yeah, it is. I remember when I was a kid, we went to 25th and Diamond. And he was like, that's Lewis Lloyd. And I'm like, who, who that? He's like, he played in the NBA. He played with the oh, Rockets. Yeah. Yeah. And and I felt like every time he touched the ball that day, it went in. And I was like, oh, snaps. He did play in the NBA just because he made every shot. I, I believed it. Yeah. You know? But sweet Lou, rest in peace. Um, and that's the guy you've been, you know, talking to again recently. Yeah, actually, I was going to try to get him to come on a podcast. You know, um, I, you know, see him before I go to work every day. And, you know, like, then he was, he was down in Houston and do a camp one week. And then when he come back, you know, things happen. You know, it's sad, but, you know, rest in peace. Our condolences out to his family. Um, and it definitely impacted the the entire community, oh, the yeah, NBA yeah, community. Yeah, I think yeah. the NBA and uh, Drake University are helping, you know, basically pay for his funeral arrangements. Um, so that just shows how big of an impact he's had and is how well respected he is. And, you know, just the love throughout this city, man. Mm-hmm. Like, like it really is, you know, just going around. And, you know, like I was just up there the other day, you know. Um, you know, the week I talked to his, his brother a little bit, you know, um, when, when things happen. So, yeah, oh, man. but, you know, I guess in regards to, um, you know, today's show, I think we got a good topic ahead. I'm going to share about a, a personal experience, one that I learned a lot from that at the same time was very challenging for me, uh, you know, from being a coach. Um, where I think coaching has really kind of helped me grow a lot off the court or outside of the gym um, in the stage that I am I am in now. But before we get to that, um, you got any other shout outs for this week? No? No. All right, cool. Uh, to all our supporters out there, I'm shouting y'all out. So I appreciate every subscriber on YouTube, every follower on Instagram. And everybody that listens to us on our more on the go platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, and Google Play. Uh, so thank you all for the support. And remember, share with your friends, family, your folks. Share with a stranger because you know the things that we're talking about. Our goal is ultimately to help uh, you know people out there, helping people see different perspectives, make better decisions, and you know live a have a more positive outlook on life. Also, we working on getting official No Stop and Cab t-shirts. Right. T-shirts, maybe some hoodies, crew necks. So, let me know. DM me, text me, email us, nostoppingkev at gmail.com if you're interested in how you can get your own No Stop and Kev attire. So, hit me up. Uh, but yeah, so today I'm going to share about something that happened this past season um, when I was coaching it was a very challenging situation so I'll jump back to my first year when I was coaching right remember I told you I had to kick a team a kid off the team uh-huh. like first week of practice yeah so um, I'll tell you that story a different time because the story a little bit of a long story but I'm gonna try to cut it short um, so I kicked that kid off the team my first year coaching just because of his attitude he told me I was tripping I said, I'm tripping, you can leave my gym, right? <laughs> just just because being in my position, uh, I started coaching when I was 21, right? So I'm very young. My players, most of my players look older than me, right? right. Um, our head coach, Dev, he's more, he's more respected. He's more forceful. He has a more, 
you know, a stronger position. And, you know, he's the head coach, right? So you got the young-looking assistant coming in there. I expect the people to try me, right? And this kid did. And so he put my foot down made him leave just because, you know, kind of growing up being taught by you is no nonsense, right? Like right. The story you told me, right. I bet you never – you ever told a coach he was tripping? Well, you know what? Assistant coaches catch it. The head coach, you don't really say too much to, you know. Because um, he can tell in the minutes. My, my, you know what, just like even when I was in college, um, yeah, I argued with my assistant coach. I said things to my assistant coach that I ain't going to say to the coach. Oh, and man, even, though, be... even though the assistant coach is going to tell the coach. But see, when you force somebody's hand to, to make them have to do something, then that's, that's another thing. You got to know. Like, you know, you always got to know your spots. Yeah, like, you can't you know, cross the line. Yeah, you just got to know when you do that. And maybe because you was young and you wanted to prove something or get something, you know, like that, or you wasn't going to have that. See, like today, like you probably going to tell the story where you handle a situation a little bit more different, a little bit more mature. Actually... Yeah, you just gave a nice little foreshadow there. You, you smart. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but we all grow and we yeah. all learn. I'll you know? say one thing for sure is coaching basketball really helped me grow. Uh, one of my weaknesses has been, you know, I'm a very impatient person, right? So I'm very impatient. And when I get impatient, I become a firecracker, <laughs> right? Like I'm just ready to explode. It's like don't say anything. It's, it's time to rumble, right? <laughs> um, but I've become more patient. And so... Going back to last season, we're at practice, right? And we're getting ready to go in a playoff game against a, a tougher matchup. We were a Division D school. I think we, we had a Division C matchup, right? Um, and so for practice, to get our guys ready for a playoff atmosphere game, because, you know, playoff game is different than regular season. Playoff game can, sometimes can slow down, be a lot more physical, you know, refs not going to always call certain things. So it's, it's a different atmosphere. So we brought in some older guys to scrimmage our guys, right? Some bigger, some guys that are between 20 and 30, right? All right. Um, and our starters were having some trouble just like getting in the sets, you know, and they were really, they were just frustrated like everyone was. But it was good because I knew if, they were doing well enough to give me confidence that I was like, all right, tomorrow we're going to be okay. Today sucks, but if you come out and play like this tomorrow, we're going to get easy baskets, and we're going to be able to defend on the other end, right? So I called a timeout because I saw our boys just mentally drained, right? And the kid that I kicked off the team my first year, oh, yeah, I forgot to say he's back. So second year he came. I wanted him on the team, but he had work conflict, so he couldn't play. Third year of me coaching, he was able to play, so he was on the team last year. And I loved having them there. Um, but when I called the timeout, you know, I just wanted to give our guys a mental blow. Come come on and be like, listen, we're going to come out. We're going to run this play, the play that we run every practice. It's like our staple play. We're going to execute this. But he was kind of outside the huddle, right? Yeah. So I'm like, yo, what you doing? Like, get in here. Like, get focused. You know, I probably said some other things like get your head back in the game. You know, like it's going to be all right. And he just kind of had this look. And then he took a couple bad shots, right? Like he took one, like Jack the three, kind of traveled, went to go shoot, came back down with it. He looked stupid enough just by, you know, kind of fumbling your feet in your hands. So I didn't say anything. And then he did it again. Like he went to take the same shot that's out of his range. Because you know kids these days, they watch stuff and all that. Everybody want to be a shooter. But... I'm like, no, you're not a shooter. You hit shots. You're not, it's a difference, right? But it's cool. When he gets in the rhythm, I'm fine with him taking taking these shots. But there's a time and a place, and you got to understand that. And the type of coach I am, I'm very particular about so shot selection. I want us getting great looks. And he wasn't taking good looks this day, right? And I said something to him about his shot selection. And he came back at me with something like, something sarcastic. Like, I'm just not going to shoot no more. I'm just not going to shoot, you know, that attitude, which that doesn't help anybody. Like, I got you on the floor because I know you're capable of hitting shots. I just need you to take the shots that you're probably better off at making. Like a nice catch and shoot three in the corner. I'm like, yo, he can hit that. Cool. That's all I'm asking. And so, you know, another play, they came out and they were just kind of, he just was kind of like off. It's not the energy wasn't there and the effort. 
And I'm like, yo, if we're going to sit up here and do this and, you know, think things are funny. Oh, he laughed at something, right? I said something to him, he laughed. And I said, oh, we, we think it's funny today, but when the team is out there kicking our behind tomorrow, we're going to see how funny it is because we're going to be going home at the end of it, right? You want to know what he did? What did he do? He went, ha, 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 ha. Ha 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 ha! Right? I'm like, oh, he really gonna, he really gonna try to show me up? Are you gonna try to show me up after I let you come back here? I'm the only reason you back on this team because I could have vetoed you the last two years, right? Mm-hmm. Gave you second, third chance. Coach Dev goes up, right? Now head coach steps in, and like you're not gonna do that. He does the same thing again, right? He did it to you or to Dev? Both of us. He did his ha ha ha. He just completely lost it. Like, practice was so frustrating. Me holding him accountable for his shot selection was so fr- he was just He was just done. You know when you have the complete collapse? It's a wrap. Mm-hmm. That, that's what happened. And Go ahead. No, I'm going to ask you. So, what did you do? So, I like kind of, I let Dev handle the rest of it from there. Because I was just, I took some things and it really made me do some thinking. Because I was like, I was, I was shocked. I'm like, you really had the audacity? So we disciplined them as a as a team, right? We even gave my man an option to leave because he's being so disrespectful. But he started calming down a little bit. And after after practice, right? I'm talking to Dev, and I'm like, I'm really pissed off that you would. For some, I care about all my boys so much, right? Like I do anything I can for them. Like think about it. I work full time job. When I leave the gym, even if I stay there, I gotta go home and do more work. So I'm up to like 2 a.m. some nights, especially when work is busy. I'm getting back up to the next day between 6 and 7, so I'm really only getting 4 to 5 hours of sleep. I'm going to work and coming straight back to the gym, and I'm doing that for 3 months, right? So, I um, sacrifice a lot. I sacrifice time with my family. I can't always, uh, you know, hang out with Devin, hang out with my mom, my nieces, my nephew. I can't do all that because I have to be here after work, right? So, I'm sa- you sacrifice a lot. And so, when you do something like that, it's very doesn't feel right right it's like i'm giving you a lot with and you that's what you get back to me and i and dev was like you should talk to him and i'm like i'm old school it's like no you give me you're behind the kiss you gone like you you done you dead right and he's like you should talk to him and i was like i don't know like you know that's not me and he was like i know it's not but i said i'll think about it right so i go home and i'm i'm up home wrestling i'm like do i want to hit this kid up you know, do I want to reach out to him, see where his head is at? And I was like, you know what? Maybe he's having a bad day or something. Maybe something was off. Maybe just the intensity of practice. Maybe it was just too much for him. And so I text him and I say, maybe my initial starter could have been better. But I was like, bro, why you fold today? You know, fold meaning break down, collapse. And he was like, I didn't fold. I'm like, you had a whole episode. Like you were... Acting like a child were blatantly disrespectful. And you know what his response was? Nothing. He didn't respond. Right? So I gave him the option. I provided a space. I stepped out of my comfort zone to have a conversation. Right? So I can see what was going on. So that we can basically squash it. Right? Put it behind us and move forward. He didn't respond. So I talked to Coach Dev the next morning. And I was like... I don't think this kid should get on the bus today. I don't think he should come to the game with us. Because, one, you disrespected the coaches at practice. You did that in front of the entire team. It would just be a weird dynamic to have you there. Like, you're right now you're a cancer to our entire team going into a playoff game when we're trying to prolong our season, right? A big matchup. Having you in layup lines, your energy is off. Because we didn't talk about it. We didn't put anything behind it. So it's just... Huge elephant that we got to deal with. And I, quite frankly, I don't want to deal with that on game day when I got 14 other guys I got to think about. Right? Right. And so we, you know, I talk it over Coach Dev. He relays the message. Because I'm like, yo, what you think? And he's like, I I had the same idea. I was about to hit you up about this. Right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not completely in left field. We have, you know, I guess the director at his campus tells him, like, Coaches said you can't go to the game, right? So I'm sitting at my desk at work, and I get an outlandish text message. Like, I can't even repeat the things that were in this text message because it was so bad. Like, my mom was upset and was like, dude, something has to be done about this. It was that bad. Like, 
<laughs> every I was called everything but a child of God in this text message, right? For a kid that I've done so much for. So, trust me, I'm I'm like hurt, and I'm like, I hey, Dev, I'm like, yo, Dev, you get you get a text message from <laughs> from my guy? You did he text you? Dev said no, and I'm like, oh right, wow, let me let me let me read this to you, right? And so, you know, Dev goes and calls him. And at the school, I guess a, a counselor there was talking to him. He was very upset, and I get it. And in his message, he was he was blaming it on me. I'm like, bro, I'm not the one that said what I said was sarcastic yesterday. Didn't want to talk about it. That wasn't my decision. I actually stepped out of my comfort zone and tried to come to you. Because the Kevin from a year ago wouldn't have reached out to you at all. You know? Uh-huh. And so he did that. And, you know, I... One thing my mom said to me is like, "Oh, you gotta, you gotta report that. Like, you gotta do something." And I'm like, "Was that for the things he said?" Yeah. And I'm like, "That's not what I'm here for. I'm not here. I'm here to help these kids be successful in life. Right? That's my goal. I wins and losses, whatever. But if I can take this situation and help him learn something going forward for the rest of his life." That that's why I'm here. That's why I take this job. That's why I sacrifice all that I do to be here. So I could have railroaded this kid. Like he was a senior. I probably could have gone. I could if I pressed hard enough. I probably could have made it to where he didn't graduate that year. Probably could have had him expel because the message was that bad, right? Right. I didn't want to do that. I use it as an opportunity to talk to him and be like, "This is what could happen. This is what I could do. You take an example like this, put it outside of." This school, this team, you make decisions like that, emotional decisions like that. That's how people end up dead in jail. You don't want to go down that road. This was a practice that he did all this. Yes. Did he want? Did y'all wind up letting him play the game? No, he didn't get. We didn't let him get on the bus. Dev and I made a mutual decision that he wasn't coming the next day to the game. So how was he after this? After that? After that game? At what? Reached out to him, had some conversations. Uh, then when he came back to the gym one day, he did he did eventually apologize to me. Right. Then I saw him like a month ago, a month or so later, and everything was fine. And you know, it was it's kind of behind us. Um, but I made sure that you know once he came back and you know we talked about it briefly, and you know I shared like what I could have done, why I didn't do what I could have done, and what I wanted for him. Yeah. I think he took it in somewhat he still might be guarded but you know i talked to you about this and you was like wait for him to come to you to have the conversation well you know also like i i don't know i could i could sit here and say now how i probably would have handled it because i got time to think about it i got time to look like that but you know like one thing is like i always say sometimes when you catch people like that now you gotta step back you know it might have been Good to, you know, because, like, sometimes you can't get through at certain times. Right. So, you know what, you might have to give him the moment. But, see, we can't let people push us because then once they push us, then we go on, we stoop them right down to their level. You mean push us down to their level? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like I'm saying, it's a whole thing. It's like sometimes, like, you know what, like I remember dealing with this this kid. And, and he, he started, like, telling me, like, all this, like this. So then I... I had to step back away from him. And then I came back at him like a few minutes later after I gave him a chance because he wasn't mad at me. He was mad at someone else. But by me trying to, what to call him, he was like closed right then. And then. <clears throat> so I had to give him his moment, his time mm-hmm. to cool down and then come back. It's just like as a player. See, when I was telling you, I went at my assistant coach and stuff like that. I went at my assistant coach when it was me and him. Not when he was in front of people, yeah, and not at, at, at like that. So therefore, like I don't know. Maybe I would have tried to tell him you need to hit the shower today, and you know I don't know if I would have would have you know pushed it to the point where I wouldn't have let him play tomorrow. I, I don't know. See that's what I'm saying. I don't know. But I I know one thing. It, it was time for him to hit the shower today, like that, or you know what? You need to run some laps or do something, you know, or something like that. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah. You know, we were at the end of practice, and I told him I was like, because our history, I'm like, hey, you know where the door is. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to be here, 
I'm not gonna make you be here. And also, players would were trying to police him and calm him down too, because he was just he just lost it, right? right? And it's like I'm not gonna hold it against you 100, percent which is why I'm like I, I reached out, which is something that was difficult for me to do. And when he started responding, I kind of felt insulted too, right? Because it's like yo, I'm, I'm I'm really trying to work here. You know, I grew from that a lot, yeah. and it was hard. I did something I never would have done before. Um, but you know, it just it just constant another thing that I learned is that there'd be small points in the season where I would notice he still had some of that old him in him like just attitude on the bench um, I would hear things about you know comments he would make on the bench like oh if I was out there like selfishness right because mm-hmm. uh, you know that's that's a theme in life you'll see that um, you know sometimes people make bad decisions it's, it's out of selfishness right and so I would see that then. So part of me regrets not kind of calling him on it or pushing him on it then and there when I would see it. Because part of me feels like, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Part of me feels like, you know, the more I would have pushed and challenged him on different things to break him out of it, the more he could have grown. So that's something that I'm going to carry with me going forward is to use a little bit more discretion. And it's, it might not always be like, yo, you were wrong for this do x exercise or something right it might just be like hey bro i heard you were saying x y and z why do you really feel that way let me explain to you what my vision is for the team where you fit in where i think you fit in and then let me hear your thoughts on that you know something like that whereas just ignoring it completely it's kind of like just just saying oh you know what it's not that's actually not that bad compared to what it used to be i gotta you want to continually challenge people to become better versions of themselves so like we got to hold ourselves accountable but we also got to hold other people accountable well you know too it's learning how to deal with, mm-hmm. with them you know like we we talk about this in basketball but we could say like this in life like people that you're around people in your circle you know people like even when some days they may be having a bad day it's certain ways and certain things that you have to say to approach them mm-hmm. or or to even talk to them you know like you know you just have to find a way in you know just like sometime with you and you get upset or <laughs> or something like that like you know i got to try to find a way to to where we don't go at each other because see sometimes my thinking is, is crazy too and and terrible too and you know like sometimes things just want us to to go wrong go at each other or, you know some some simple things and like same way like when you said he did this and you was into the game and like now he pushed you a little bit too mm-hmm. you know like, like that but that's what i'm saying like sometimes like you say ignore it no nah, you might ignore the mo- the situation then but then go back at him mm-hmm. and let him know like i used to always tell you like if you wrong i'm agree with you but i'm gonna let you know that you wrong you saying you're gonna agree in the mo- like publicly in front of people i may right there but i'm, I'm gonna let you know what's wrong Oh, so you're saying at you the know, moment. You know, at the moment, you, you may, you may, like, you know what? Here go instance, I'm going to tell you this story with me and Brianna one time. Brianna, like, called me one time. You know, I was I was at a convention in, um, in, in Lancaster. And um, Brianna called me. She crying and tell me about her mother. And we, we laugh about this. And she tell me, and she tell me the story. And I don't believe it. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe it for nothing, nothing, nothing in the world. So I said, "Don't worry about it. I'll be there tomorrow." So you know, tomorrow I come, me, her, and her mom. We go there, and I let her know. <laughs> I did not believe what you were saying, but just to calm her down and let her be a little calm and try to talk to her where she went home and was able to relax. Then, but the next day, I I came I came to Philly. Just for that reason, and to go to dinner, but then I explained to her, no, I, don't, I didn't buy the story you were telling me. Neither. I don't think you're buying it. And you know, it's funny because we were just talking about this styles a week. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, actually for her bir- her birthday weekend, Father's Day weekend, mm-hmm. like you know, we we saying, you know, how you bring things back and just yeah. start laughing. About. Yeah, but it's time. But she tried it in, in the same way. Like she was cool, and then we was able to get through to her without her having no attitude, without her being anything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's also a time and a place when you, when you do, the, do the thing. Yeah, it's like, you you know, you kind of help 
the emotion settle away. You know, you kind of yeah. help. You know, once you kind of remove emotion from a right, situation, right. it's easier to have a conversation. Right, right. You know, and to kind of look at things logically. Right. Like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Like, I think if I talk to, you know, my former player today, we'd probably laugh about the situation. Right. Like, we'd probably right. have a good laugh, right? And then he may or may not say, you know what, I shouldn't have done that like that. I, I went too far, right? Or maybe he still thinks, you know, what he did was fine, but it'll be easier for me to really explain to him, like, yo, listen, don't, you know, going forward in life, like, this is going to be a, an event that you should always remember, just because you might have another situation where you get really frustrated in life. Like, think about it, you're only 18, you got a lot more years, God willing, ahead of you, right? With a lot more years, will come a lot more trying situations. So this is how you gonna handle it. And like you, you, you know, you take, you think about, you know, being mentally tough and handling adversity. Whether, you know, it's when he gets to college or when he gets into his career field or you know, just in day to day life. You know, you think about a challenging situation and how you get through it. The best people, mentally tough people, are able to, you know, kind of take a step back, think about it, figure out what their next steps are, you know, keeping a level head and doing that, no matter how upset you are. And it's not always easy. You know, you talk about it like that, it sounds easy, but it's not always easy. It's, it's about, like, I think it's about maturing. Mm -hmm. And all the time, you don't mature or sometimes you accept some things and you just kind of keep it more or you know what sometimes you just push it under the rug mm -hmm. and then you know the rug start getting higher yeah. and, and, and so you know at one day it's, go, it's going to explode you know like what like when you're talking about that like I, I like i was telling you the other week when i was telling you about when when i went in that slump and when i went in there and then like me being the person that i was i was doing things to make my coach mad too you know, like like sometimes, like you were saying, I was taking bad shots at times, too. You know, when I knew I wasn't supposed to shoot the ball. But then, like, and then I was ready, and I actually was ready to transfer, too. You know, um, but then, like, something said, man, I can't beat him. You know, I'm either going to have to join him. And then when I decided to do that and start playing, and, and you know, then that's when I, I learned something. And that's when everything went back. And, and like, I remember him grabbing me and talking about, I knew you were going to make it, you know. So he had, he already knew and something, and he stuck with me even when I was doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so, like, it, it's going to be, it's like probably a learn. He might learn something from it. He might not. He might not see it. It might be further down the line. You know, sometimes our best teacher is when, that thing when it when it the role ver, vice versa, you know when 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 he put your shoes on and had to deal with somebody. See, you know what? It always can be funny until it happened to you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's and I'll tell you, you know, like I I don't go into practice by any means expecting something crazy to happen, you know. But when something does happen, I got to figure out how am I going to deal with it, right? So you know, you talk about mental toughness or maturity like I'm able I can say that if that would have happened to me my first year coaching that would have resulted something that would have been a lot different you know right because like you mature you you used to handle you handle something and it was hard huh like it was hard not to just you know you know I you asked like how did I handle it in a moment at first you know I told you Coach Dev kind of stepped in. Like, when it was happening, I was just, you know, processing it. Like, just, I didn't immediately have that emotional response, you know, and just go off or go back. It was like, let me think about what's the best way to handle this. Because I got someone that's a loose cannon right now, right? He's, I got to I gotta talk him off the ledge here. Because he's really going down a dangerous road, right? Yeah. And it's like. What's the best thing I can do in this situation? So even after practice, when I went to Coach Dev and was like, "Yo, like I don't know what I should do. Like, like he, he's just done. Like he's like he's not coming back." And Dev was like, "Why don't you Why don't you talk to him?" And I'm, so if, if that situation happened to you today, just say it happened to you today, what would you do? 
in the moment or afterwards? Right now. It Once just happened. It. it just happened. We in the huddle. He just did all this, and all this just happened. What would you do? We say we mid game or like same same thing. Practice. Same practice it could be practice. practice. Whatever it is. Hmm. <sighs> Cause you gotta, there's that shock element, right? So once I get past that, I guess my first response is, even all right. So I'll go back. I did try to, like, talk to him. Um, I guess all right. Here's what I would do differently. Because even when he was talking off the cuff in practice, I was asking things like, "Yo, is this, are you serious right now? Is this really what you want to do? Like, is is today that this hard for you? That this is how you gonna act? Maybe I would say, hey, listen." I know you're better than this. How about we go in the office and have a conversation? Or if you don't want to, how about, you know, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Or, you know, if you're ready to have a conversation tonight, give me a call when you're ready. Um, But just know you're probably not coming tomorrow unless until we have a conversation. That way, at least now he knows he has a clock. Like, all right, I got to at least have this conversation. It might be tough. I'm not, on my part, I'm not forcing him into a conversation if he's not ready. I'm providing a space and opportunity to have a conversation. Because to have a difficult conversation requires maturity. And you're not always ready to have tough conversations. But me being in my position, I'm older. I've been through more. I have to work forces me to have tough conversations with customers about like, if their financials aren't that strong, like, hey, we can't lend you money because your financials aren't great. And it's like, how do I have that tough conversation? Meanwhile, a lot of my clients are a lot older than me, have seen a lot more in that world than me. So it's hard, right? It's very uncomfortable. So same thing on the basketball court. Having a conversation with your coach, being a player, is very uncomfortable because you're talking to a person that has some authority, right? So I, I get what it's like being in their shoes because I've had to have difficult have difficult conversations with my coaches right so me being a coach my goal is just to let you know like hey one we need to have this conversation it's not going to be easy but i'm going to provide you a platform where you can talk and voice your your opinions or how you're feeling because it matters you know like what i what i would say in a situation or hope in a situation i would do is tell him it's time to hit the showers today. <laughs> you know, I that did. way, that way, I'm giving him some time. And now, I got some time to to make my decision or think about what I'm going to do. Then maybe I could get with Deb and we could get together if I'm an assistant coach or, you know, something like that. Now, I can look at, uh, get a better way because if I'm reacting off of that first reaction, then I might not be calm and I might not be thinking clear because like, you know what the first thing, he done embarrass me. Yo, you out of here. You yeah. know, you done. You off the team, period. And and like you said, that's really it's not gonna help. I'm just throwing him out that's not I'm just really throwing him out him. there. I'm yeah, he's not yeah, gonna learn anything. That's really not him. gonna help. So like when you say that that's why I said that like the day sometime, but you know what? Now if he take a shower Maybe I can reach him, and like you said, now maybe I can talk to him a little bit. Now I don't have him around the team. Yeah. It's me and him in the office now. So now, like, you know what? You want to go at it with me now? Like, you know what? I even had bosses, like, that I work for that I, I went in the office, and we had it out. Mm-hmm. But we was able to have it out like that because, like, you know what? We talked, but I didn't embarrass him. Yeah. I didn't do it in front of people. When I ain't agree with something, yeah, I may let you know, but it's a time and place yeah. for everything. Right, time and place, and you build that relationship to know, like, there's an understanding. Right, right. You're not crossing any lines. Like, I, you know me. I can be a very passionate, emotional guy, very fiery at times, well, right? Saying, and yeah. so it's one thing. Like, today, we were having a debate earlier, right? Yeah. And our tones were elevating. Oh, yeah, but my knew, tone going to get I knew it was nothing personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm fine for if you got to use a certain word. To, like, I'm fine. I'm not going to... I'm at a point where I don't take everything personally. You know, I try, at least I try not to. I try to, you know, even when I feel like I'm taking something personally, I try to be like, all right, what is what is this person saying to me? What are they trying to convey? Like, Kevin, stop, get yourself off of a pedestal and figure out what they're, what this person is trying to tell you, right? Because that's, that's what they're doing, you know? And I tell my players all the time, like, especially... 
I'm like, yo, we, we, we can talk about things and play it out there however you want to. But one thing, like I said, like, you know, doing something like that in a group setting it around other players, you know, can make you react in another Definitely. way anyway. Because we got to pos- – per- and I, all right, so look, we're going to take this from the basketball court to the classroom because this is a conversation I got to have with my players. I'm like, listen, if a teacher says something to you, right, and then you call a teacher a name or something or tell a teacher to shut up or you're not going to do something – you do that in front of a classroom full of your peers. What do you what do you expect the teacher to go and do? He got to bring the hammer down because if you show him up like that and he does nothing, he got to worry about the next person doing like that. And you're doing this to a person in a position of authority, right? So they have some power to do something. You're forcing them to use it. You know, it's funny because I remember when I went to college and they always tell this story. About um, this guy that Coach Ritten had to throw up the basketball team. This guy was an All-American. But he put him on the spot in front of people. Not that he wanted to throw him off the team. But you know what? When he put him at that spot and took him there, he had to do it. And But see, you know what? This made him bigger too because Coach Ritten, he threw an All-American off the team. And that's all people would say. And, you know, that's what the fans say. He got rid of an All-American. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, this this person here was so good. But, you know, like, like but he had to do it. Not that he wanted to yeah, do ex- it. Yeah, and to your point, so I'm glad you said that because it's something I wanted to share because it ties right into this. Um, my So my second year coaching, right, there was a stretch of games where I had to, you know, step up and be the head coach for a few games, right? And... One of those games, like some of those games were playoff games. Um, and, I, and our star player, right? He's, we've grown from this and we had a conversation. But, you know, one game, I guess he was getting frustrated with fouls. And, you know, you got kids, they're starting to get recruited. They're getting attention. And so, you know, your head get a little big, get a little swollen. And he says to me, Kev, you got to advocate for me. And I'm like. You have no idea what I do on these sidelines. Like, maybe I should sit you on the bench, you know, so you can see how much advocating I do, right? Because I'm, I'm always in the rest here. You know, that's, that's kind of a role I've embraced as the assistant. Coach Jeb doesn't really have to go to refs about calls. I'm going to handle it. Because you know me. You used to ref games. You kind of taught me, you know, different nuances or the technical aspects of how to make certain calls. Um, and so that's what I... Pick Brent refs brains on. It's like, who made you call that? Or if I think they're really like off the cuff or something, I'm gonna let them know it. Like I had our guy, you know, you know, he's a guy I can use his name. He, I'm sure he'll be comfortable with it. But Jalen, you know, he kept going up to get a basket, right? He kept getting, he was getting hammered, right? The ref standing right in front of our bench, and I'm yelling in the ref's ear, "We got the same angle. What are you looking at, bloody whistle?" Right? I'm calling him. You know, I'm I'm going off. Right, so I I advocate for my players, right? So when you're telling me you got to advocate for me, one, it's like don't tell me how to do my job. Like your job is to go out there and play, execute, all those things. It's like stay in your lane, right? I'm not stepping out there on the court, you know. I'm not telling you, you know, I'm out here to help you. I'm doing my job. And so, you know, I asked him, I was like, you think you LeBron or something? And then we had a heated back and forth in the middle of a game. Like this is the middle of a game, mind you. I don't have an assistant coach there, right? So I can't devote all my attention to that. So we had a few choice words both directions, right? And I went home and I'm I'm thinking to myself, Coach Dev, girlfriend Devin, I'm like, you know what? Jalen's season is probably, probably over, right? I said, I don't know if I'll kick him off immediately. But my goal was his punishment was going to be something that would make him quit. Like his punishment is going to be like endless. It was going to push you to that point where it's like, I'm not, it's not worth me doing this, right? And what happened? I get a text. Hey, Kev, can we talk? Right? I'm, I'm not, I was this close to throwing our star player off. Like without him, we're, the odds of us winning go from here down to down here. It's possible, right? But it's that much harder because he makes that big of a difference. It's like if you take a LeBron or Harden off the team, it's like they can still go out there and probably win a game, but a lot of things are going to have to go right, right? And 
you know, my players are like my little brothers. Like, I never want to kick you off the team. And a guy like that, I definitely, he's my All-American. I don't, I didn't want to get rid of him, but I was about to have to, right? But he showed some maturity. You know, he held himself accountable. He called, he's like, listen, I was, he admitted to being out of line for it. Um, he admitted that, hey, it was emotional because of the way the game was going. And then I explained to him my perspective. I'm like, and I, you know, I told him, I was like, bro, maybe I should sit you next to me on the bench, you know, next game. So you can see how I, how much advocating I do, right? I joke with him like that. And, you know, he got it. He, it was just differences on perspectives. Like he didn't see I'm always arguing for him to get caught. He, didn't, he doesn't see that because he's out there in the midst of the game getting frustrated because he's not getting oh, called, oh, right? It's probably, different that perceptions. It Frustration. He's yeah. just frustrated. Yeah, yeah. and like... The choice words didn't bother me at all, right? I that that what like yeah, you try to show me up, you were disrespectful. I'm like you're out of line for that, and so you were going to be held accountable, right? But once I stepped back and I'm like, once he explained, like yeah, I was just emotional. I'm like, okay, cool, it makes sense. You weren't just blatantly being disrespectful. You lost. You you weren't yourself, right? And I'm fine. I'm like that's fine. You recognized it, but the thing that impressed me the most was that. He held himself accountable, and we were able to move on from it. Like because of him making that, sending that text, practice the next day was a lot different. Because if I got him doing X, Y, and Z on the side, imagine what the guys I do got practice. They're gonna be it's a distraction, right? We can come into the next practice like nothing ever happened, and I don't even know at what point did I share with people like, hey, he did this behind the scenes because you know they might be thinking, oh, he getting special treatment because he's Jalen right first thousand point score he's getting this it's like no Jalen manned up stepped up to the plate held himself accountable for what he did we had a conversation now our perspectives are we're looking at this thing from the same angle and now we can keep on moving right yeah ended up winning some more games after that you know we had a, a great season that was the best season in school history but could have been very different just like that you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at that, and, you know, then I'm, I'm just taking that in as, as life, you know. Like, I don't, I know, first of all, I didn't have coaches that I could really just really, you know, talk back to yeah, me or either. really do things. I wasn't that type of person either. Because, like, you know, like, you, you talk about my close coaches in Sun Hill, they, they, they. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, you, you they can't. They, yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> you know, Coach Retton, um. Coach Redner and Kyle, he had the, he had the mob backing him up, man. So you know, it, it wasn't no really get, getting getting tough with him or something like that. Cause somebody he ain't got to do nothing. Somebody else gonna do something, you know. So, but you know, like when when we talk about that respect, man, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a good thing that he came back with respect. But that's what happened. Like you know, even in the world when you might try to tell somebody something to help them. And they don't like what you're saying mm -hmm. or like that because, you know what, they want it their way. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think you touched earlier on selfish um, or something like that. And that's what we have in us, mm -hmm. you know. Um, today, I still have selfish. I just learned how how, how selfish I could really be. Yeah, you become more aware you, you of know, You know, yeah. And, like, I mean, like, like I said, like, sometimes, and I always go back, it took my incarceration to really show me these things. It really, because it took, it gave me time to really look at some things. And like a lot of times we don't see it. And it, it's a good thing that, that he does, that he did do that. But you know, like we coaches, whether we coaching this team or helping this person or whatever, we still always going to be a coach. Mm -hmm. And you, we're going to be a coach in life when we just give an advice to a cousin, a nephew, a nephew's friend or something like that. Because you, if you see somebody doing something wrong and you know that you can reach out to this person and, 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 and touch them or tell them some things, that's what you do. Just, mm -hmm. like, it, it might, just like it's your player. It don't have to be your player sometimes. It could be another player. You could right. be at a a, a game and you could just say something to another player mm -hmm. you know but like you know what it's just like sometimes today it's the respect that people don't have you know don't have for for the game for life or whatever you know yeah and you know something that we touched on maybe an episode or two ago was that um it's when someone's holding you accountable and you you mentioned this 
it's not always easy to kind of accept it and look in the mirror. That's one of the hardest things to do in life is to, you know, acknowledge some things that you're not quite happy about with yourself. Very difficult. And to build on it, you have to grow out of it. But it takes time. It takes some effort. You got to work on yourself, right? All through life, you're working on yourself constantly to improve. But the first step is acknowledging something that you probably don't want to. You know, it's like realize for me, it realize if somebody say something to me, and like sometimes I don't like it because you know sometimes you 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 tell me something that's the truth, and like sometimes the truth hurt, but like. What I got to look at for me, and I don't know uh, for everybody else and what way other people, like, you know what, if I know that you're a person that's trying to help me or not trying to hurt me and not trying to make fun of me, then I can take it. And even though I might not like it because I could say, like, you know, I, I have a friend, like, you know, sometimes, like, one guy, like, we were talking about, like, the work or me going, and, like, I ain't like it because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And he was telling me right. Mm-hmm. But you know what? This is a person just telling me something that, cause he care about me, or you know he care about mm-hmm. telling me something right, and like I really didn't like it, or because I, I I wanted to do, it, but like I know he was saying it just to help me. Right. So therefore, then I gotta really take that under consideration. Mm-hmm. You know, when 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 it's something like that. Now now now, if another person come, like out of some other kind of way, out of some mischief way. Then like no, I'm I'm not gonna take that, and that's mm-hmm. probably not gonna bother me because he probably just trying to co-sign what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So he ain't helping me, you know. It's the person that say something that that I might not like, but I gotta take a look at it. Yeah, you know, like always, you know what? Take a step back. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, pause. You know, like like what they do, woo side. You know, like and you 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 have to do that on a lot of things. And then you can make better decisions. Because the first thing, like, if somebody say something to me and I don't like it, then I may say something back to right, him that right, I don't like. Right. So now we at war. And you know what? All this person was doing was trying to help. Yep. And, you know, I'll tell you one thing me and Devin have learned is that you got to look at the intention behind a person's actions, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, she might say something, but it's really, it's really just... That helped me, but it hurts so much that now if I, like you said, if I respond a certain way, it's just going to be even worse, right? We're both mm-hmm. going to be worse off. But you got to learn to take it, just, just try to remove them, take that deep breath and be like, all right, what, where is this person coming from with this? And then again, why did this trigger me so much? Right. Why did it trigger right. me? What What am I doing? Right, right, right. That this made me so upset because some, what they say, the truth hurts. The truth hurts, right, right. So right. look in the mirror. It's not always easy to, but you you got to do it if you're gonna grow. Yeah, and then like you said, who want to be wrong really? Nobody. You know who really want to be wrong? Like you know, I, I'll say. I don't mind being wrong, but it might be hard for you to get in my mind and get in my head that I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, like, it, it might be hard, and I might fight you tooth and nail. Like, you know, we just, when we was just having our debate earlier, like, you know, I hear what you were saying, but, you know, I, you know I'm still going to bleed the way that I want to bleed until I can. And you know what? And it's funny sometimes. Like, I don't have a problem telling you that you're right. It might take me, a t- I might have to go home and, and sleep on it. And mm-hmm. then I might, you know, because once, once I start thinking about it, then I might say, oh, he's right. So I'll come back and tell you that you was right. I yeah. don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I get yeah. that. So um, we got to get ready to wrap up, too. But when you say that, so I took this personality assessment for work a couple of weeks ago. And it's part of, like, our in the program um, event or, like, conference. We talked about the results from the personality assessment and one of my characteristics is I like to be right right mm-hmm. like the I score highly in two categories they were almost even one was like 49 percent the other was like 48 but uh Devin always says I like to be right right and I'm I view myself as being like you it's not that I like to be right it's just it's going to be a 
part of me probably does, but there's, I'm not unwilling to change my view. You just gotta make, you just gotta right. give me enough evidence, right. and right. I might right. not do it immediately. Right. I might need some time to think about it, and so me, I just need evidence. You know, so you used to say this over and over again. Personality assessment was the evidence, and I was like. I went back and I was thinking about it because I was still trying to fight it even after the personality assessment, right? And I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe that is that is something I need to think about. But you know, something I'll do going forward is just try to communicate that that hey, it's not it's not about me being right here. I just don't. You got to help me see that I'm wrong. Because it's not always to see that you're wrong. You, you got to look at it. You got to take yourself out and and you know observe it. You know, another thing when, you, when when we talk like that. See, like, you know what? Me and a person, I can't, you know what? I'm not seeing it because for some reason this person can't reach me. Mm. But another person could come along and say the same thing that he's saying. That I can accept it. Mm -hmm. And it might not be the same words, but now I can see what he was saying. So sometimes, you know, like they even say, sometimes you got somebody else yeah, can can help you. Different communication with the, yeah, styles, different right, right. like personalities. And sometimes you be open. Yeah, you, you open know. to different people or something like that, and you know, and like I learned that. And what made made me really think that it was another thing when you were talking about re being in a relationship. Sometimes when you with your significant other, like sometimes y'all can't open up to, but somebody else can. And I remember one time. We, I had this one per person I used to go, and we used to write letters like to each other at night. We would do that because like we couldn't talk and get through. So when we wrote the letter, we were able to say what we want to say without no argument. Mm. And it was, and, and that kind of way was able to communicate. We was able to communicate. Then we was able to talk. Oh, wow. I remember. Um, <laughs> that's funny, but yeah, at least it opened up the door for that. Right. right. When I was. This past season, I was helping out with one of the middle school practices. And there was a kid there. I like his game, too. I hope he stick around so I can coach him one day. Nice little small guard. Undersized. He plays super hard, though, right? Um, and he was getting frustrated. And, like, his coaches would try to talk to him, and he would still hold, hang his head. And then I went and pulled him over to the side. And next thing I know, I got that eye contact, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just a different perspective, a different person. Person I used to talking to but it's just something about that at times that allows people to you know calm down step out of emotion take themselves out of the picture and really you know look at the situation objectively but yeah it's time for us to bounce but as always thank you all for listening please share it with your people you know you can on on platforms now, it's so easy to share stuff. Hey, you can just hit the little box that's like a rectangle with a little arrow, a little share icon, and it give you options. So you can email it, you can send it as a text message, with, which is what I do with a lot of things. Um, but yeah, share our YouTube video if you're just listening. Take this episode right now and send it to a friend. Just send it to one friend, right? Just so that maybe they don't know this is out there. But just send it to them. Let's see what happens. Also, shout out to uh, Cousin Charday. Yo, she was holding Facebook down the other day. She was doing a, a live chat oh, really? on, um, you know, he had a great topic. I'll let y'all go check it out. I'll leave the link down below. Um, but she shouted out the podcast heavy. Um, Instagrits podcast shouted us out heavy this week. Um, so thank you for the people that's really trying to share this. I appreciate everyone that even, you know, they just, they just tell their friends about it, dude. It goes a long way. Um, so thank y'all. We'll be back uh, next week. Appreciate the love and support. Bye.